Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Starfield. My name is Camel. Today, we're going to delve into the random facts, helpful tips, hidden secrets, and obscure particulars of the game, and run through 10 things that you didn't need to know about Starfield. But, you know, secretly, you do totally need to know them. Now, if this kind of stuff interests you, my other Starfield videos can be found down in the description via the playlist link. Be sure to check all of them out. After all, I did make them for you. Down there, you can also find all of my social media links along with timestamps for each topic in this video. Now, Starfield is packed with a million tiny details, so if you do know of any interesting trivia, facts, or secrets about Starfield, be sure to let me know down in the comments, and I might just cover it in the next video. We've got some strange things on the list here today, but without further hesitation, let's dive into 10 things you didn't need to know about Starfield. But actually, you totally need to know them. Now, I'm sure that through your time in game, you have seen these moppin' bots, these little cube-like bots that zip around and I guess supposed to be cleaning the floor. They're not that common, as I was like, yeah, I've definitely seen those before, and then I went to find one for this video, and it was quite a challenge to hunt one down. But more than likely, you have run across one of these. But did you know that these moppin' bots, these cleaning cubes, do actually clean stuff up? As if you go into your inventory and drop a very small miscellaneous item, as far as my testing has concluded, there's no real parameter other than the item needs to be small, like a syringe, a pencil, a pen, something like that. If you drop it on the floor and there's a mop and bot within the vicinity, it will actually travel from wherever it is at about double the speed it normally goes to come and clean up that thing that you just dropped on the floor, which is a detail that I personally really enjoy. Now, as you can see here, I tried to drop some ammunition on the ground. Well, I did drop some ammunition on the ground and it wasn't interested in it. This plastic tray wasn't keen. Uh, a wrench wouldn't pick that up. But coffee cup lids, pens, syringes, it took full joy in sucking those items up. Now, if for some reason you really need that pen back that it's just cleaned off the ground, you can actually kill the mop and bots and in their inventory, they will be carrying the items that you dropped and that they cleaned up. So firstly, that's another really cool detail. And secondly, you can get back that item if for whatever reason you accidentally dropped a really small miscellaneous item and there was a mop and bot nearby that sucked it up before you could make any use of it. And with the secret powers of the mop and bots revealed, let's move on to the next topic, which is probably my favorite. Although given my current chosen career, I am extremely biased. As throughout Starfield, we can find many items. I'm sure you know that, but we can find these scroll holders. They aren't very common. They're one of the rarer miscellaneous items that don't really serve any purpose apart from being collected or collected and then sold. At face value, it's nothing too special. Throughout Starfield, there are plenty of kind of antique themed items that you can go, oh, that's interesting, pick it up and sell it. But obviously with Bethesda Game Studios making Starfield and Bethesda Game Studios owning the Elder Scrolls IP, this scroll holder, well, it's pretty suspicious and pretty obviously a reference to BGS's other franchise, The Elder Scrolls. But to take this even further, if we go to the city of New Homestead, on the moon Titan, that is a moon of Saturn in the Sol system, that being the solar system in which Earth exists, IRL and in game. Well, if we head to New Homestead and then go inside the main building and go down the stairs, we can find a museum. This is filled with old Earth artifacts as New Homestead was one of the first off Earth settlements that humans built in Starfield. So it kind of showcases and archives the very first kind of primitive space living. Along with that, it's got a bunch of artifacts from old Earth, basketballs, soccer balls, hockey sticks, model ships, compasses, bits and bobs like that. But in this cabinet in the middle, we can find four items. One of them is rather interesting, and that would be the scroll holder. And while the item itself, it's like, okay, we've already seen this. What is interesting is the description of it in the interactive display panel, which as we can see right at the bottom, it says scroll case of unknown date and origin, believed to have once been a sacred relic this old scroll case likely predates any other synthetic item in the museum. The scroll itself has been lost to time. So this is once again, furthering the Elder Scrolls reference. It says that the scroll holder is the oldest thing in the museum, old scroll, Elder Scrolls. But interestingly, it also says 
that the scroll within this scroll holder has been lost to time. Now, I think that this is a reference to the fact that the Elder Scrolls 6 has still not been released. It's not even been made yet. Yet, the last game of the series, the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, came out in 2011. So it's been 12 years now and the Elder Scrolls 6 isn't even on the horizon. So in this sense, the game, the Elder Scrolls, the Elder Scrolls 6, well, it's kind of been, it's kind of been lost to time. Although it will come eventually. I guess it's more lost in time at the moment. But it could also be a reference to the fact that the Elder Scrolls, the actual Elder Scrolls in the Elder Scrolls series, tend to pop in and out of existence from time to time. As at one point, the Imperial Library held 273 Elder Scrolls, but then they counted them again and there was a different number. And every time they recounted, there was a different number because the Elder Scrolls were popping in and out of existence. And then one day, all the Elder Scrolls vanished. So saying that this scroll case or scroll holder, this old scroll holder, is also missing its scroll might be some super deep meta reference to that bit of Elder Scrolls lore, but that could be a bit of a stretch. Well, actually, it makes perfect sense whether the dev intended that or not, I don't know. And if you do want to learn all about the lore of the Elder Scrolls in the Elder Scrolls games, click the link above. I got you covered. But it does not end there, as within the Lodge, which can be found in New Atlantis, the Lodge being Constellation's headquarters, if we go up to the bar area, on the wall, there is a shelf, which has a couple of books and a scroll holder. Interestingly, the scroll holder appears to be propped up by a book, or the books being propped up by the scroll holder. I'm not too sure which way this is meant to go. But interestingly, the name of the book that is in contact with the scroll holder is nothing other than Great Expectations. This is, of course, furthering the Elder Scrolls reference, and I think more specifically pointing to that the Elder Scrolls 6 is being held up by great expectations, or great expectations are being held up by the Elder Scrolls. I'm not too sure which way this goes, but it's something along those lines. So anyway, there's some really cool Elder Scrolls references. Now to go along with these Elder Scrolls references, we have another one. As we've seen in the last two videos that I've done like this for Starfield, we've seen known roots. But both of the times we looked at those known roots, they were the green kind, the normal kind. But I've got something special. As if we go to the star system, Alpha and Draced, I think it's called, and then head to the planets, Alpha and Draced 3, and specifically land in the savannah regions, well, we could find something pretty cool. While yes, at first glance, it's definitely a savannah, we go, okay, cool, interesting. It looks nice, but I've seen it before. Nothing too interesting here. Until you look closely at all these purple plants. Because these aren't just any purple plants. These are purple known roots. Now, as far as I'm aware, within the Elder Scrolls series, we've never seen a purple known root. We've seen the green known root and the crimson known root. I don't think we've ever seen any other colored known root. But regardless of color, in terms of shape, this is 100% a known root. I guess it's just been sci-fied somewhat. But much like the others, sadly, we cannot harvest them. But something tells me that this will not be the end of our known root journey in Starfield. As so far, it's been in every single video of 10 things you didn't need to know about Starfield. So I'm sure we'll see it again. And with that said, if you do find any other known roots, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I'd love to go and check them out. Ah, uh, yes. Now, next, we have something that I think will come in very handy for a lot of you. If you are sick of walking around town in your spacesuit and helmet, everyone else is in cool clothes, whatever, and you're there looking like an astronaut, well, you can actually fix this without having to unequip your spacesuit or your space helmet. As if we go into our inventory and to our helmet section, we can see that down there at the bottom, there is the option to hide helmet in breathable areas. Breathable areas being areas in which you don't need a space helmet to survive. So you can just toggle that and now your helmet will not show in breathable areas, even though it is still equipped. And in the exact same fashion, if we go into our inventory and to our spacesuits, we can see down there at the bottom in the same spot, there is the option to hide spacesuit in settlements. So now between the two of them, we won't see our spacesuit and we won't see our space helmet when we walk around town. All that will be shown is whatever we are wearing underneath that, our apparel. Which is quite nice, because, you know, it feels a bit funny going to a bar in a city in a full spacesuit. So I feel like in terms of immersion, this is much better. But very handily, we don't have to unequip them. So we still have all the stats from the spacesuit and the helmet at the same time as looking pretty fresh. So there's a cool little tip that hopefully will help you in the uh, aesthetic side of things in Starfield. Ah, uh, yes. Now, next up, we have something that I'm sure most of you know at this point, but it's funny. So I have to tell you, in Starfield, if you go up to certain characters, for example, Sarah Morgan, 
and hold A on the controller over her hair or Z I think on the keyboard and mouse, it will actually grab a tuft of her hair and then you can move it around like any other object you would pick up and move around in the world. Now as far as I can tell this serves no purpose apart from just being pretty funny. But there are two things I think worth mentioning when it comes to this hair pulling um, mechanic in game. Firstly, it doesn't seem to work if the character is sitting down. For example, we know that it works on Sarah Morgan, but when she's sitting down, I can't interact with her hair at all. And secondly, it doesn't work on all hair, and it also doesn't work on all long hair. As I spent way too long trying to grab onto and pull Andresia's hair, I knew she'd like it. But for whatever reason, despite her hair being long-ish, I couldn't do it. Yet this chap with this haircut, which is shorter than Andresia's hair, um, I could grab his hair and move it around. But then this lady at the bar who has long hair couldn't grab her hair. But I was able to get a grip on this lady's ponytail. So like I said, I don't think there's any real point to this in game, but if nothing else, just have a little chuckle at it. As after all, it is hilarious. Ah, uh, next we have a rather interesting detail. One that I did notice myself in the first few hours of playing Starfield, but didn't really know what it meant. What am I talking about? Well, if we come to the viewport, which is basically a bar next to the landing port in the city of New Atlantis on the planet Jemison, well, as we can see, it is a bar. There's a bunch of people walking around. There's someone behind the counter serving drinks. All is well and good. Nothing out of the ordinary. But there is actually something out of the ordinary. As over in the back corner, we will spot a rather mysterious man in all black. This is a character called the Hunter. Now I won't go into detail about the Hunter, but I will say, if you know, you know. Now again, when I found this at the start of the game, I was like, he's pretty cool, I want his armor. But now after a few hundred hours of game and some context, I'm like, oh. And that oh is extended when we talk to him. For example, when we ask about his armor, he says this. I guess you could say I've always had it. Once you've been all over, like I have, you might find yourself in something like this too. Well, yeah, well, I, I go all over. A little psychological warfare up front tends to make things easier. If we ask whether he's military or a mercenary, he says this. Retired, actually. From too many lives to count. But I've been all those things, yeah. And a few more. I spend a lot of time in the fringes these days. God help you if you come across something someone wants. You'd think it was things like civilizations and factions that cause people to want to shoot each other. No, even without that, it's still winner take all. And then if we start getting along with him, he will say this. Yeah, you got that right. Wait a second. I think I'm in danger of having a real conversation with someone for a change. <laughs> Better stop here. I'm sure we'll see each other again. This will exit the conversation and we can't talk to him again. Next time we come back to the bar, he will be gone. But while he's still here, if we click on him, he has a few extra lines. I go all over the settled systems. Might run into you again. I'm just waiting on something. Don't mind me. I'll see you around. So a pretty mysterious character if you run into him at the start of the game with no context. But again, if you know, you know. And if you've got the context, everything he says now, you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It kind of reminds me in The Witcher 3 how one of the first NPCs you ever talk to is Gauntero Dim. So there's a really cool detail that could very easily be missed by most players. And if you don't have the context and you don't know what any of this means, just play the game. You'll get it soon enough. But speaking about the beginning of the game, one of the very first characters we meet is a man named Heller. He is a miner for Argos Extractors, and after the initial opening quests, we can get him as a follower if you so wish. But did you know that along with Heller being a miner, he can also lay some bricks? And I'm not talking about the construction kind. As at the very start of the game, inside the Argos Extractors mining facility on Vectera, we can find a couple of rooms, but one of the rooms is this kind of bathroom room. There's some benches, some lockers, there are some showers. On the left hand side, there is a toilet. And on the right hand side, there is another toilet. 
but this one's a bit different. As we can see, the door is closed, there is a sign that says out of order, and there's another note on the door with some very small text which we will read. Argos Extractors, Notice. We regret to inform you that this restroom is closed for repair. Hella is no longer permitted to use disposal facilities due to continued toilet clogs. Maintenance is scheduled to dislodge plunger that got stuck in bowl. Please use other restroom until further notice. In addition, please remember to replace provided toilet paper in correct orientation. Failure to do so will create outrage amongst the crew. That's funny as it's almost another nod to the flipping toilet paper that we covered in the first video. I'll link that above for you. Anyway, it goes on. If you have any questions, please keep them to yourself as we are busy with other work. Thank you for your continued cooperation and have a wonderful day. Signed, Argos Management. So Heller has been mining some heavy ores and he's been depositing some heavy ores of his own. Now, if we go into this toilet, we can find that it is clogged. There's a bucket, which is empty, thank the gods. There is a plunger, which is apparently stuck, according to the note. There's an empty toilet roll on the floor, and there is a might as well be empty toilet roll on the toilet roll holder. So hell has been burning through that space toilet paper. And once again has clogged the damn toilet. Now, what's interesting to me is that the note says that Heller is not allowed to use the toilet anymore, which made me think, where does he go? Because on Vectera, you need a spacesuit to go outside, so he can't take a dump outside. And he's banned from using the toilet, so... I guess we can fill in the blanks with our imagination, but even then, I have no idea where he's taking a crap. And I don't want to. I just don't want to find it. But anyway, there's a funny detail about Hella and his, um, bowel movements. Now, while we're on the subject of toilets, I have something rather interesting to share with you. As we know, all throughout Starfield, there are bathrooms and in them, most of them have toilets. But did you know that some toilets have very valuable items inside them? Most people probably wouldn't know this because one, who's gonna look in a toilet? Two, if you do decide to look in a toilet, you can't grab the lid. You can't hold down on the lid like we can with people's hair and lift it up. And three, even if you do grab another item to lift the lid up with, most of the toilets don't have valuables in them. So I think after a couple of times you would give up on that pursuit. But some of them do actually contain good stuff. So what you can do is go and find an item in the world that you can't pick up into your inventory, but that you can hold down A on the controller or Z on the mouse and keyboard and pick the item up and move it around in the world. You can then use this to bump the toilet seat up and you'll probably have to then drop the item to kind of wedge the toilet seat up in place because if you walk away from it, it will just fall back down. But eventually, if you keep checking toilets, you will run into a toilet like this as there is something in it. And thank the heavens, it is not a gift from Hella and it is not brown, but instead it's Panacea, which is a very valuable aid item in Starfield. And even if you don't want to use it, you can see the value is 740 credits. So there's basically just 740 credits sitting inside a toilet bowl and not just this toilet bowl. I will admit I've maybe checked 20 to 30 toilets in my entire playthrough of Starfield for things like this. And I found two or three things sitting in there. So you probably wouldn't want to go out of your way checking every toilet in game or toilet farming. But if you find yourself in a bathroom that has three or four toilets and you're not in a rush, have a look. There might be some panacea in there. There might be craptopium or stoolion or puopium. You won't know until you have a look. So there's a rather interesting toilet fact for you in Starfield. Again, I wouldn't go out of my way doing this, but if you're in the room and you think, what if? Have a look. You might just find something very valuable sitting in there. I once actually found five playing cards in there. Turns out it was a royal flush. Now this next one's actually kind of three in one, and maybe you can put them all together somehow. So firstly is the surveying skill. Each time you rank this up, you will actually get a level of zoom added to your scanner. So you bring the scanner up and then you can zoom in a couple of times. So this can be pretty useful for checking something out at a distance by just zooming in on it and deciding whether it's worth going over to or not. So you can save yourself some time or just have a snoop around. 
I actually got this really early on in game and I use it all the time still. So that's pretty cool. Now, the second thing is that you can actually make your follower, your companion, wear any particular set of armor or apparel that you give them. What you need to do is click on them and then choose the option, let's trade gear. When you get here, you wanna go into your inventory. You then wanna trade them the piece of armor or clothing that you want them to wear. So now, said armor or clothing is in your companion's inventory. Then you just wanna to go to that item and down the bottom, right about in the middle, we can see there is an equip option. Weirdly in the preview window, it has our character model opposed to our companion character model. So don't be confused by this. Even though it's showing you your character, it will actually equip said thing onto your companion. And now just like that, your companion is wearing whatever the hell you want them to wear. Now, personally, I think most of the companion outfits that they have uh, really suit them and their character and they're kind of unique and look cool. And I wouldn't really want to swap that out. But if you do want to do it, that is how you do it. And it can be pretty funny. As we can see here, Andresia looks uh, very out of her element. And the third piece to this puzzle, which is definitely not a puzzle because I have no idea how any of these things come together. But the third thing, we need to come to the planet Parima 2, which can be found in the Parima star system. Once here, we need to land at Paradiso. As I'm sure you're aware, this is a tropical resort kind of place. And down by the water's edge, we can find a whole bunch of sun chairs, umbrellas, beach balls, volleyball nets, there's a bar, all the things you would want at a tropical location like this. But there are also a whole bunch of holidaying people Wearing bikinis, swimsuits, swimwear, board shorts, budgie smugglers, togs, boardies, whatever you want to call them, it's swimwear. Ah, but did you know that around Paradiso we can find four of these beach villas? If we head inside any of these beach villas, you'll probably want to do this at nighttime or when no one's around to see you do this. Well, if you come into any of these, you can find these lockers and almost all of the lockers always contain a swimsuit, at least one. And you will also be able to find resort wear, which is just holiday clothing basically, but we want the swimsuit. Now you can use the trade authority technique that I showed you in the last video to clean these stolen items of their stolen tag. So they will be yours and they'll never be taken off you. So the resort wear looks like this. There's a whole bunch of different variations, but you know, someone on holiday, that kind of vibe. But the swimwear, that's where it's at. This is the kind of clothing that we we're all expecting, we were all wanting, all yearning for to be in Starfield. Well, here it is. Now you can walk around the thousands of planets and moons in pure style. Forget EM weapons, stun your enemies with fashion. So that's that, that's pretty cool. But when it comes to swimwear, zooming in on the scanner and making your companion wear whatever they want, I don't really know how these three things could ever come together. But hey, maybe you can think of a way to put these three things together to do something fun, funny, or enjoyable. Me personally, I can, I can never think what you could do with these three pieces of information. No idea how they could come together. But nonetheless, I hope you found those three pieces of completely unrelated and unrelatable information useful. And finally, we have something that I enjoy quite a bit, and I think that it actually holds some hope for potential underwater exploration in Starfield. It was either planned before the game came out and they just didn't implement it, or it will be implemented later. I hope, anyway. So, as we know, some planets and moons hold traits. These are just geological points of interest, like a bunch of fossils, there might be a glacier, somewhere where a meteor shower recently hit, something like that. Well, there is a very rare planetary trait called slushy subsurface seas. Now I've done quite a bit of exploring, scanning, surveying, and I've only ever found this trait twice, so I do believe it to be quite rare. Anyway, when you run across it, you will find this, two shards of ice or rock sticking out of the ground, and at the base of them is a pool of water, which appears to be casting this prismatic rainbow of light onto the rocks. This will be much more evident at nighttime, as if you find one of these during the day, it can be hard to see the lights. So that's pretty cool, that's pretty neat. But if we look down into the water, we can see some bits of kelp maybe, and maybe some sparkly things. But if we try and jump into the water, well, we can only float on the surface. As we know, underwater exploration in Starfield isn't a thing. We can't get underwater. But with the use of console commands, I can show you what's under this water. And it is quite impressive. As down here is a small nook 
of wondrous prismatic chromatic kelp seaweed lights i'm not too sure what's going on but i think you'll agree it looks pretty damn cool in fact it looks almost cooler than just about anything we find on land in starfield so it just makes me wonder why would bethesda create this beautiful site that no one can see that to me is very strange and makes me think that they had planned for underwater exploration to be a thing either that or they're planning on implementing it later on i don't know i wouldn't count on it but i hope so i hope they do now interestingly in one of these subsurface sea ponds not only were there forests of submerged plant life but i actually found a whole bunch of fish there were several kinds of different fish some of them i have seen on other planets as an ocean dwelling creature but these ones were scaled down much smaller and they also did not move they were static objects they were not swimming around so that's kind of weird but also from the surface of the water you can't see any of this sea life so there's really no point in them existing in here because no player is ever going to see them. So again, it's very strange to me that Bethesda went to the effort of creating this gorgeous site for no one to see. Very mysterious, and I'm curious as to why you think they went to the effort of creating this when we can't actually get underwater. Are they planning on having underwater exploration, or do you think it's going to be implemented later down the line? Much like this subsurface, I guess we'll just have to see. And with that great aquatic mystery, we have concluded the 10 things you didn't need to know about Starfield. But secretly, you do in fact totally need to know them. Now, I learned so much from you guys in the comments, so if you do know of any interesting trivia facts or secrets about Starfield, be sure to let me know down in the comments, and I might just cover them in the next video. I would also love to know what you think about everything we covered in today's video. I do hope that you found it helpful, I do hope that you learned something new, or at the very least, I hope that you just found it enjoyable. I can't wait to hear about your opinions on all these things, and of course, about the secrets that you have found in Starfield. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. There is plenty more Starfield content coming, and all of the videos that I have already made can be found down in the description via the Starfield playlist link. Down there, you can also find all of my social media links. Be sure to check all of them out. And if you did enjoy this video and would like to support the channel in a more personal way, please feel free to leave a super thanks right here on YouTube. That would be greatly appreciated. Myself and other YouTube content creators make about one cent per full video view. So with even just one dollar, that is the equivalent of watching this video 100 times. So again, no pressure at all, but if it is something you would like to do, the Super Thanks is a great way to help support channels that you enjoy. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I've been Camel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.